The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. Hello, I'm Harold Weinbreck, Mayor of Cary, and this is Cary Matters, the monthly program designed to help keep you informed about issues that your council members are working on for our community. Joining me as co-host this month is Don France, who is the District B representative. Don has been representing District B since 2007, which is pretty much downtown and northeast Cary. Yeah, I'm kind of the 12 to 3 guy, if you think of uh, the town of Cary as a clock face, so... Oh, that's a good visual. So let's see, that would make me the 12 to 12 guy, I guess. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> anyway, Don's uh, been representing us, like I said, since 2007 and doing a fantastic job. Thank and you. So why don't you give us a rundown of what we're going to see today on this episode? Absolutely. Uh, well, for our main topic this episode, we're going to talk about our first mini council staff retreat that we held back in, or in September. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the new downtown manager and Halloween. So, Mayor, why don't you start us off by telling us what happened at the mini-retreat? All right. On Tuesday, September 10th, the council, directors, management, administration, and legal staff met for four and a half hours at Cary's Wake Med Soccer Park. The purpose of this retreat was to get a good understanding of budget needs and to discuss council priorities, knowing that the planning for the next fiscal year is beginning now. And by the way, the town's fiscal year goes from July 1st through June 30th, so we are at the beginning of that cycle. There were three main areas of discussion. How are we going to plan for our aging infrastructure, the council budget items for consideration, and the general fund, fund balance. Well, the first topic was an interesting conversation on infrastructure, especially the aging water and sewer lines. Most people don't think about that type of infrastructure because it's pretty much hidden. That is, we flush the toilet, it goes somewhere. We turn on the faucet, it comes from somewhere. And Cary has almost 1,000 miles of water pipes and about the same amount of sewer lines in the ground. What people probably don't know is that approximately 10% of those water lines may need to be rehabilitated or replaced within the next 20 years. In addition, old clay sewer pipes can easily break and cause spills, and that can be an environmental disaster. So the question is, what are we doing about it, and how are we going to stay ahead of the game? Well, first of all, we want to make sure that we inspect the old infrastructure on a frequent basis. For example, we have multiple town crews out putting cameras down the sewer lines to make sure there's not any blockages forming. In addition, we have spent about $14.4 million on sewer rehabilitation projects during the last 10 years. And we make sure we plan for all our big ticket water sewer items by putting them on the 10-year capital improvements project list, which for the most part is, is not normal practice for communities our size. Absolutely, and once again, it seems that Carrie's leading the way. Mm -hmm. uh, we also spent a lot of time talking about council's priorities, and it's no secret what my biggest priority is right now. It's the downtown park. What a surprise. Yes, the one it built <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Uh, but other topics mentioned included an expansion to the library to be built uh, by the county in downtown, uh, maintaining and mowing more medians, starting the land banking program once again for future parks, uh, more sidewalks, making staffing needs a higher priority, implementing technology task force recommendations, increasing nonprofit expenditures, and reevaluating the benefits of using Cary TV, this, this program. Uh, staff took notes of these requests and will get back with us on the cost to implement them, then we can prioritize. That's right. In the final part of our mini-retreat was a discussion on the town's fund balance. 
the fund balance is the town savings account, and the state requires municipalities to set aside a certain portion of it, which for carry amounts to about two months of operating reserves in the general fund. So why do we have a general fund balance? Well, besides the obvious of being able to handle disasters, bond rating agencies use this as one of the components in determining the financial strength of a municipality. And that's important because the higher the rating by the bond rating agencies, the lower the interest rates on our loans, and lower interest rates equate to millions in savings for our citizens, which is a good thing. Absolutely. Kerry keeps an additional four months in its fund balance, which brings our total reserves to a minimum of six months. We are one of a handful of municipalities in North Carolina that have the highest rating from all three major bond rating agencies. Those other municipalities include Charlotte, Durham, Greensboro, Raleigh, and Winston-Salem. So why would we consider a change in our fund balance policy? That's a good question. <laughs> our staff has pointed out that the interest rates are earning almost nothing. And all municipalities with the highest ratings from all the bond rating agencies have less in reserves than we do. In addition, almost all catastrophic events are covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so we decided to discuss whether those taxpayer dollars could be made available for something else. That is, should we pay down debt? Should we use cash instead of debt for some capital projects? Should we keep it available for major economic development initiatives? Or should we just leave it as is? Uh, there was a lot of interesting stuff presented about what information bond rating agencies use. Out of all these cities, Cary had the highest per capita income at over $40,000 annually, the lowest poverty rate at about 3%, the lowest unemployment rate uh, about 6%, the lowest tax rate, at about 35 cents, uh, our debt per capita and our debt service versus operating expenses are the second lowest. Our total general fund balance is the highest, and our available fund balance, that four months that we set aside, is the highest. So there was a lot of data presented to council for review. And all those high and lows that you went through were all the good things. Good things. That's right. <laughs> and as a result the, of all this, you know, large amount of information, the council decided that we'd rather study it pretty carefully and consider all this information before considering changes. All in all, I thought the mini retreat was a great thing and a great idea and hopefully it will make our budget process even better than it is. Absolutely. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to tackle some of the questions we've been hearing from you. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to address some of the questions the council's been getting from you. Don, what do you have? <laughs> Okay, uh, a lot of people want to know about the new downtown manager that just started. What can you tell us about him? Well, he is brand new right. and I'm getting to know him. <laughs> and his name is Ted Boy. <laughs> and he started on the last day of September and we are very happy to have him and his family here in Cary. 
He came to us from Charlotte, where he was the director of Historic South End at Charlotte Center City. Ted specialized in economic development, redevelopment, and community engagement initiatives. In his former position, Ted recruited, developed, and motivated the more than 780 small businesses and 3,200 residents that make up the historic South End, resulting in over $300 million in economic development, the construction of 2,500 housing units, and the addition or expansion of over 100 businesses. Prior to his work with Charlotte Center City Partners, he served as the program director for Tryon Street Mall Manager. He has a bachelor's degree from the Citadel and has received multiple awards for projects for public spaces. Sounds like he's the right guy for the job and somebody that we're excited about continuing the revitalization efforts in downtown Cary. I believe so. <laughs> I, I'm very confident in what he can do. What else do you have? Uh, well, it's October and that means Halloween uh -huh. at the end of the month. Uh, and every year people want to know what the town regulations are in place for Trick or Treat Day. That's a good question and one we always get. So what's the answer? Well, believe it or not, as much as Carrie does regulate things, we actually don't regulate <laughs> tricks, treats, pumpkins, ghosts, or goblins. And you're even allowed to eat as much candy as you want. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> uh, but seriously, in some communities, the town actually sets the day for trick or treating, especially when Halloween falls outside of a Friday or a Saturday. But that's one thing we actually stay out of in Carrie. You go out and trick or treat whatever you want to. <laughs> there you go. But whether you're doing the tricking or the treating or the driving, we want everyone to have a safe and good time. Please, please be safe. Uh, be, be very careful, uh, especially in the neighborhoods where you can expect kids to be running back and forth across the roads after dark. And to all you Darth Vaders out there, turn the lightsaber on so we can see you. Amen to that. <laughs> And if you want to do something a little bit different, check out our Scary Cary Halloween activities for all ages at thetownofcary.org. Well, coming up after the break, we'll give you some insights into what's going on in October at Town Hall and how you can be involved and included. Go. We're gonna we're gonna make some juice. It's gonna be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on. Line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Let's try Challenge it. your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay. Like all right. They might surprise you. And she took another sip. You saw it. Search we can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. We're back. In this final segment of Carry Matters, we want to let you know what's happening in October and how you can be involved. Don, why don't you give us a start? All right. Well, October has two regularly scheduled council meetings, one on Thursday the 10th and one on Thursday the 24th. Mm -hmm. The council's operations committee meets on Thursday the 3rd, and the planning and development committee meets on Thursday the 17th. The council also has one work session this month on Thursday, October 17th. And at the time of this taping, the, the topic of that work session wasn't quite finalized. Yep, and if that's not enough, there's a lot of fun events going on in Cary this month. As part of the Town of Cary's continuing effort to showcase our revitalizing downtown, there will be several events in downtown through October. The Downtown Performance on Academy Street will finish up their season with comedian John Floyd on October the 12th. The Cary Arts Center will host the Gibson Brothers on October 11th and several other events throughout the month that include the Cary Players performing Nonsense, that's with a U, 
and the Applause Youth Theater performing The Importance of Being Earnest. For more information, go to the town's website and search for festivals and events. Oh, and one more thing, uh, very important. October 8th is Election Day for the Cary Town Council and school board seats, so do not forget to vote. Uh, you can also vote early at the Herb Young Community Center in Cary on Wednesday, October 2nd through Friday, October 4th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. or on Saturday, October 5th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Well, that's it for this edition of Cary Matters. We appreciate your watching and hope that what we've shared has been of interest to you. Please let us hear from you as your time is important and we want this show to be of value to you as we work to bring you, our citizens, closer to your government. That's right, and remember, help keep Cary litter-free, clean, green, and beautiful by volunteering with our Spruce program. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for choosing to call Cary home. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.